So you do Jimi Hendrix, and then you get the role for Paid in Full. I think that was it. Either that or The Wire or... I think, yeah, The Wire and Paid in Full was right around right the same time. Right around the same time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So Paid in Full, okay. yeah. So that Paid in Full. Experience. So Paid in Full was an interesting one. Because at that point, you know, when I, when I look at your filmography, Paid in Full was, was the biggest movie you were in in terms of an iconic movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Above the Rim was dope, mm -hmm. but when you look at Above the Rim versus Paid in Full, you ask kids today what they remember, everyone will say Paid in Full. Above the Rim is also Tupac. It's gonna, it's gonna right, stick so around. Right, so you, you, you got the Tupac, but in terms of like the film itself, right, right. I feel like Paid in Full was like, almost like the new Scarface yeah. of, that, of that era. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I do know what you mean. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because they, they even reference They even reference yeah. it. It's ironic, but it's true. So you start to put together Paid in Full. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what it's about to do when you're working on it? No. Uh, you never really know with, with any of the pieces. You might have a gut feeling, but you don't really know it. And early on, you learn that um, these things are slowly, they grow slowly. Sometimes they take off and sometimes they don't. A film or a TV project. Like The Wire. It, it, it's the most famous thing now, but when it was out, it wasn't. So you just, I never would think that it would come to be as it is now. But um, Paid in Full happened because I knew Makai already. Makai introduced me to the story um, and was like, yo, you'd be great at this. And he gave me what I needed to as a reference. So I, the Feds magazines and all those type of mags, mm -hmm. at the time I used those as references on the story. And, and the script. And um, then I met AZ in New York. AZ after Faison. I, yeah, AZ Faison, who, who is the person I portray as Ace. As Ace, exactly. Yeah, his real name is AZ, yeah. A-Z-I-E, Faison. Yep. And um, I love them, I love all those cats. They, they, they mean a lot to me, you know. Um, I, uh, I ended up getting that role largely because when I met with him, um, it just sealed the deal. It just sealed the, the deal. And um, I thought to myself, I could be this guy. When I met him, I realized I could be like this guy, you know. Um, and then it was all committed, because as an, as an artist, actor especially, you just really have to commit. And if you fail, at least you committed to it, and you weren't wavering on ideas. So when I, when I got his story, it's such a rich New York story. But Damon Dash was involved with it. Right. And I think that at the time, you know, um, a lot of the conflicts to do with the, with, with the film, progress, had to do in that world. And I wasn't privy to all the things. But I would just go on to say that I think that film may have been more critically successful if those conflicts wouldn't have been going on. I would say that there were hmm. produ production conflicts that Dame was having with Harvey Weinstein and there was just issues like that. Like and, give me an example. And they were poorly would handled. Like give me an example. Um, at that time I would say that Damon was um, way more bravado. We know Damon Dash and so. I've, I've dealt that, with Dame. Dame. Dame is a nightmare. So, well, so, <laughs> I, so could, yeah. I could relate to what you're talking about. I don't about. like to throw people under, you know, nightmare, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say one it. night, I'll, next I'll say night, a I've beautiful dealt with dream. Dame. You never know, right? Dame is a nightmare. I, I did a couple meetings, I was done. <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah, he could, back then particularly. Now, yeah. I believe he's humbled and good, you know. Yeah, I can't even imagine him back then when he was on top of the world. And oh, it was, Rockefeller it was, was it was all bad in the sense where <laughs> he just had too much control and power. Okay. Chuck or Charles Stone, who directed it, mm -hmm. was, um, had to deal with that, you know. Harvey Weinstein, they had to deal with the bravado of that personality. Me, I was submerged, immersed in the character. I wasn't really privy to how he was being. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't looking for Damon or Jay-Z or none of them. I just wanted to satisfy the role every day. And so was Makai and Cameron had to, which Cameron, let me just say, Cameron in Paid in Full? I just watched Paid in Full the other night it was on. I hadn't seen it since then, too. Mm. I hadn't seen it since the premiere of it. Never saw it on TV, never watched it on my own. Till the other night it was on, I caught it midway. My goodness, I see why people love it so much. You know, I really do, I, I get it. And a lot of it has to do with Cameron. And yeah, me and Makai, but Cameron seals the deal, you know.
it's a trifecta with him. He makes it a trifecta. A film will always yeah. be a classic, even more, it could even be bigger than Scarface in a sense. That if nobody watched Scarface as much as they watch, you know, you ain't hearing about Scarface as much. That's our generation. Scarface! Right. I you mean, because I, I could tell you, I don't know how many times we reported on somebody dying. And in the comments, almost every time someone say, you know, dudes die every day, V. Like, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not prepared for some of the, some of the stuff I'm just, it's way beyond the scope of my, even my dreams. I'm living a life that I've dreamed about, but the life is bigger than the dreams. Right. You understand, at this point. I, I interviewed uh, AZ Faison. Um, he said, now I, I guess, even though it was his story, mm -hmm. He kind of, once he sold the story and it started to go into production, he kind of lost control of That's how it goes, having you know. Having to say, yeah. That's how it goes, you know. He would be rare if he didn't. He's yeah. the writer. Yeah. So they don't deal with writers after, you know, on nothing, unless they're a writer-producer. You're, right. you're not going to have much to say. He, you know, in our interview, he said he had a problem with how he was portrayed wearing a wire at the end. At the end of the film, why do you make it look like I was wearing a wire and told on alpha? Which that, that never happened. Never happened, bro. So here I present a film to them, trap to try to save a generation. Like, wake up, man. Why do y'all destroy my character to the streets that who I'm trying to talk to to make it look like I was a snitch? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, he yeah. said that never happened. Okay, you know, I understand, I, and, I, and I, I, he should have a problem because it's his story. Yeah. It's just a, uh, that's just a convenient thing to do in a movie. It's just a technical, convenient way to wrap up the movie. That movie, he wrote a 300-page script. Okay, did he mention that? AZ has written, <laughs> he's a prolific writer, yeah. 300 pages? He has a 300-page version of that that has all the gory, literally the gory detail, that could never be in a rated R movie, a rated R movie. Yeah. So we had to pick and choose the elements of that story to really tell. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the film. I wish he was satisfied with every element of it, but yeah, you know. That's just how it goes, that's Hollywood. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. Jimmy Hendrix would come up and be like, yo, y'all messed up. <laughs> Jimmy could come out the grave and say, yo, B. <laughs> I feel you. He's like, I didn't walk like that. Um, <laughs> great, great film, by the way. Thanks, man. Paid and paid in full. Yeah, definitely. Paid in full. Thank one you. Of my, one of my favorites, as well as most people's favorites. Yeah, I see why now. I yeah. see why now.